Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. They offer free checking with industry-leading mobile banking. Who you choose to bank with can make all the difference. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. What's going on, Hokie Nation? Happy Thursday morning. We got a huge football game coming up on Saturday afternoon as Virginia Tech is on the road to take on Louisville. Second place in the ACC is at stake. And boy, the winner of this ball game just feels like they're in the passenger seat on the road to Charlotte for second place in an appearance in the ACC championship game. So much to talk about the rest of the way. We got our football crew on hand. It's episode 326 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. And it starts right now. We record on Thursday, November 2nd, 2023 from our high-tech studios at the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe, and be sure to refer the show to a friend as well. Well, the entire football crew is on set. Let's introduce everybody. It's the same fellas as always. To my right, lead analyst and columnist Chris Coleman. Across the way, our senior staff writer Andy Bitter. In the fourth chair, managing editor David Cunningham. Producing behind the scenes, Mr. Jack. Jack Brizendine, and I'm your host, Giovanni Heater. Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. The Tech Sideline podcast is also brought to you by The Hokie Way. The Hokie Way is partnering with the Virginia Tech Alumni Association, The Hokie Club, and Triumph NIL to present the official pregame festivities for Hokies Hoops next week in Charlotte. Join them at Public House prior to both the men's and the women's basketball games on Thursday and Friday, November 9th and November 10th. See The Hokie Ways Twitter feed for more information, and we'll provide a link in the YouTube description. Well, fellas, Louisville and Virginia Tech, Saturday afternoon to set the table a little bit. 3.30 kickoff from Cardinal Stadium, televised on the ACC Network. Cards currently sit as 9.5 point favorites. The line opened up, looked like as high as 12 Kind of around 10 was was the area on most platforms. Just feels like an opportunity here to take a major, major step. And in a way, skip some steps as well because you're looking to go on the road and be uh, a very, very good team. Yeah, I think I said last week after they, after Tech beat Syracuse, is like you've, you've turned a corner. You can beat bad teams. Now you've got to show you can win on the road and you've got to show you can uh, beat a good team. They like could, you know, turn two more corners this weekend uh it's possible uh certainly feel a lot better about it uh than we would have felt about it a month ago uh, i think the line's down to nine and a half now um so you know I, th- I think when you look at the game you know you see you see seven and one louisville rank number 15 and one poll number 13 and another and you see virginia tech at four and four it just you know it doesn't seem like a particularly competitive game but at the same time it's not the same Virginia Tech team that that lost to Marshall that that lost to Purdue, uh, who was two and five by the way. You know, I mean, this is clearly a Virginia Tech team that I think would would beat those teams now, especially Purdue at home. So, it's a it's a better matchup than than a lot of the numbers give it credit for for sure. Yeah, I think you look at some of the wins they've had recently, and they've beaten teams that have had some pretty serious flaws on their team, whether that's no passing game to speak of bad offensive line, I think was pretty consistent <laughs> in all those games that they've won. And, and Virginia tech has taken advantage of that. Louisville is a pretty well-rounded team. I mean, they're really strong defensively uh, better than you would think Louisville in the past. You think Louisville, Bobby Petrino and offense and Malik Cunningham, Lamar Jackson. I mean, that's like an offensive school. That's sort of what you think, but actually I think their defense is better than their offense this year. And their offense is pretty good. And coming around first year coach, Jeff Brom, uh, all the the offensive things that he brings with his system. So I think, you know, uh, top to bottom, this is a very solid Louisville team. That's why they're ranked as high as they are. Don't have as many weaknesses as some of these previous ones. It's going to be a really good challenge for the Hokies. Louisville, a team that is coming off the heels of an impressive shutout win over the Duke Blue Devils, 23 to nothing. The final score, a little bit of a rainy weather game down in Louisville uh, last weekend against Duke. Uh, they're led by first-year head coach Jeff Brom, former Louisville quarterback, 
back from 1989 to 1993. He was the head coach at Western Kentucky from 2014 to 2016, and then at Purdue from 2017 to 2022. Purdue, not an easy place to have success. He did just that. Took him to four bowl games, uh, won the Big Ten West, had an appearance in the Big Ten Championship game, his final season with the Boilermakers. And Jeff Brom already cooking uh, down in Louisville. Excellent coach. I think if you can win at Purdue over a sustained period of time, that's a sign that you're a pretty good coach. I think he was only two games above 500 there, but you have to consider where he's coaching. That you know, that's like like Dave Clawson winning at Wake Forest, and he's barely over 500 at Wake Forest. It's, it's an impressive job. Um, I think now he's at a place that's easier to win, and he's got a higher winning percentage, seven and one. Um, his brother's the offensive coordinator, so they know each other very, very well. Um, Brent Pry was very complimentary of their offensive scheme this week in his press conference. It's just, it's got moving parts to it. You know, when you watch them, you'll see them in shotgun like everybody else. You'll see them in the pistol. You'll even see them under center every now and then, even running some like jet sweep from under center. So whenever these, these days, whenever a quarterback lines up under center, you assume, oh, something's going right up the middle, right? But here it is, a jet sweep to the outside. Uh, so it's like a quick hitting play from under center. They just, they give you a lot to prepare for. Uh, they're, they're like Virginia Tech's offense from that standpoint. They give the defense a lot to prepare for. Uh, this will be a much, much greater challenge for Virginia Tech's defense than Syracuse, Wake Forest, and Pitt. It's just the Louisville offense is on another level. What an upgrade for Louisville uh, going from Scott Satterfield, the guy the fans didn't like, mm -hmm. who had wandering eyes every offseason, it seemed like, didn't really feel like he wanted to be here. They got to push him out, and he went to Cincinnati, which was a you know, decent – uh, landing spot for him to get out of there. And then they bring the hometown hero, the guy they wanted all along, back to the school. Uh, I mean, it just I mean, you've got to be crazy happy if you're a Cardinals fan right now. We're, we're your previous coaches were Bobby Petrino, <laughs> tough guy to root for, Scott Satterfield. You know, didn't feel like he really wanted to be there. I was always looking for something else. Now you've got like the guy that, uh, you know, from the family that's uh, sort of made Louisville home. And uh, so no, that, that's a, a great situation. We should point out that to pronounce Louisville, you, you kind of have to sound like you're drunk a little bit. That, that's <laughs> what I've, I've learned is that it's, you can't say Louisville or Louisville or anything like that. You got to be like Louisville. Well, like it's got to be just sort of like we had a little bit too much bourbon. Oh, yeah. You took the bourbon trail. And, right. and yeah, then you start talking about the game. Yep. An interesting piece on that, doing doing games for the ACC Network. I've asked before, like, going into a matchup, like, hey, we're talking about the standings. I've hit the talk back and be like, how would you, as ESPN, want me to say Louisville? Is it Louisville, Louisville, like, whatever? And they were like, on ESPN, typically people say Louisville. But then anybody else you talk to anywhere else, Louisville. So... I don't, I, I don't know what I'm going to do this That's weekend. That's like going down to the, the 757 and go, here we are in Norfolk. Yeah. And they'll be like, no, it's Norfolk. That's how you're supposed to say it. What's it's Norm like, Wood's view on that? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, I just you have you have a few bourbons before the game. It'd be like <laughs> Louisville, and it, it'll just roll off the tongue. Just like rolls that. right <laughs> off the tongue there. That's interesting. Well, another interesting thing is the fact that these two teams have only played each other eight times. Virginia Tech is six and two all time against the Louisville Cardinals, um, and. All of the games are fairly recently. So in 1979 was the first meeting. Tech won that one 15 to 14. The <laughs> most recent meeting was 2020. It was a 42 to 35 win for the Hokies. Uh, the Hokies have won the last two meetings between the two teams. Both losses in the series for Tech came at Louisville. So that's worth noting that Louisville's never come to Blacksburg and beat the Hokies. That was in 1992-1998. Before 2020... They had last played in 2005, so a big gap there. Um, and they've only played once while both being members of the ACC. So we're actually going to toss it to David here. We're going to look at the box score of that 2020 matchup and see what you guys remember with a little bit of trivia. How many rushing touchdowns did Hendon Hooker have in that game? I believe he had three in that three. game. He had three. Two of them came in the first quarter. Are you gonna that ask? game was like twenty one nothing or twenty. It they was. jumped out to a great it start. Was it was kind of like the Miami game the year before. Yeah, yeah. It was twenty one nothing. I remember because Fuente had sort of called out the team for sideline demeanor and like not being into the game the previous week. I, I think it was at Wake Forest mm -hmm. the previous game. It's yeah. like we just didn't have any energy out there. So like it was very noticeable in that first quarter. Dax Hollyfield especially was like towel waver extraordinaire on the sideline. <laughs> it was like a helicopter over there uh, waving the thing. And I, I remember that uh, specifically from that game. 
Hendon Hooker completed every single one of his passes in that game. How many passes all, did he throw? It was only thought, like 11, like 10 or 11. I thought it was 10. It was 10. 10. The, the box score of this game is incredibly unique. It's it's interesting. Keep uh, going, David. Uh, how many yards did Virginia Tech rush for? 279. I'd say like 220. You're awfully close. 283, Oof. Chris. How, uh, how, how many did Herbert have? Or was that your next question? Sorry. Yeah, that was, that was going to be my next question. Uh-huh. Clear Herbert had 21 rushes for... Average seven yards per carry. How many yards did he rush for? Well, well do the math there. One the forty-eight. Yeah, one forty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Wow, there you go. that was quick. You know, that was yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I <laughs> gave you the, the tech. Tech averaged five point five yards per carry in that game. Uh, Louisville, on the other hand, averaged six point eight yards per carry. How many yards did Louisville rush for? It was. They had a. They had like a they long. Had, what is it? Like a ninety-five yard run. Right. They before were about halftime. to run out the clock, and somehow got to the edge and re- broke it free for a touchdown yeah. right before halftime. I think they made like twenty-one fourteen or yeah. something like that. That was a ninety-yard run. Ninety. Yeah. Yards. Uh, wow. So that they had. I mean, I'd say two forty. <laughs> yeah. One ninety-eight. Right. Okay. Okay. It's uh, actually lower than I thought wow. based on that one. Long that that, run, that yeah. one guy uh, Hawkins. He had a uh, one twenty-nine. Uh, how many passes did Malik Cunningham throw? 32. 26. He had 35. Oh, okay. Three touchdowns, 350 yards, and how many interceptions? Two. I'll say three. It was three. It was three. Um, I just realized, I was reading the box score, but I did not realize that Tutu Atwell played for Louisville at the time. He's now in the NFL. Good name. Hawkins, Atwell, Cunningham. That was, that was a that yeah. that was explosive a, offense on that team. I think Stu Holt. Was uh was he the he running backs been, coach I on think, that team? Or yeah. tight end? He was he a was co- assistant their, on that team. Yeah, he was yeah. an assistant for sure. Who had the three interceptions for Virginia Tech? Uh, oh my, I'm trying to remember. Did Shamari have one? Shamari Connor had one. Oh, God. And he was Tech's leading tackler. Waller? Did Waller play in that game? Jermaine <laughs> Waller hurt? did not record a tackle in that game. He might have been hurt in Chapman. that game. Chapman. Armani Chapman played but did not have an interception. <laughs> Who were the safeties that year? Was Diablo on that? Uh, Diablo, Diablo was on Divine, that team. Divine Diablo had one interception. So we that was the year one he got drafted, pick. right? Yeah. So Connor Diablo, and then it was it was a it was a guy. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It was a guy who was he transferred in and then transferred out. Transferred in. And sh- oh my gosh, he was the, that safety. He, we tried him at corner and safety. Yeah. I don't remember his name. I can I can still like see his face and I remember when he signed and I'm like that's a, that's a good sign signing but like it didn't really work out. Mm. I'm blanking. Yeah, I know he was here for such a short time and didn't see a single game in person. He that went year, so. so he transferred in from Bowling Green. Yeah. Oh, uh, or sorry, he transferred in from Illinois State and then to yeah, Illinois, Illinois State and yeah, I'm I'm completely blanking. On Devin, his name. Taylor. Devin, Taylor. Devin Taylor. Devin Taylor. Okay. Taylor. Virginia Tech. Punted how many times in this game? Four. Probably a low number. I'd say four or five. It was three. Hmm. Tech. So Tech scored in the first half. Tech scored on. Tech had six possessions, scored on three, punted on three. My three prediction touch. is if Tech only punts three times this weekend, they'll win. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they'll have like five turnovers. Um, going out on a limb. Yeah. <laughs> this, was a, this was a very chaotic game. Like Louisville scored. And Louisville scored. Louisville only had four second half possessions and scored on all three of them in the fourth quarter. How many points total were scored in the fourth quarter? 21. What'd you say? I said 28. It was 34. Wow. wow. There were four Damn. touchdowns. Louisville had three. Tech had one. The one was a Khalil Herbert rushing touchdown. And then Tech kicked two field goals. So it was four touchdowns and two field goals. Um, I'm looking through the rest of the stats. I that was a weird game because it was the COVID season, but oh. they, they had a little bit. You were there, right? Yeah, they had uh, they had less uh, strict rules yeah. in Kentucky. So there's actually a crowd at that mm-hmm. game. It was one of the few games they had a crowd that season. Yeah. Um, now here's what I remember about that game. Virginia Tech was unfortunate earlier in the season with some COVID cases, particularly down at UNC, but it reversed itself. Like, over half of Louisville's defensive line was yeah. out that game. Yeah, and Tech right. just ran rampant all over them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking through the box score. So, Tech was up 
21-14 at halftime. The only score in the third quarter was a one-yard rush. I'm going to assume this was a jet sweep from what player? James Mitchell. No. It was a wide receiver. Uh, yeah. I know the answer. Is like, yeah. Trey Turner. It was it Trey was. Turner. It was a one-yard rush. <laughs> Tech was up 28-14. Brian Johnson hit a 30-yard field goal to put Tech up 31-14. And then Louisville scored to make it 21-31. 34, 20, oh, yeah. oh, and then Tech kicked, Tech kicked another field goal. But it got to a one-score game with five and a half minutes left. It was 34-28 Virginia Tech. Khalil Herbert had a rushing touchdown, but then with one minute remaining, Malik Cunningham threw a pass to Hawkins for a touchdown. So it was 42-35 with a minute left. And I want to say, um, yeah, and then they tried to onside it, and it was recovered by Tavion Robinson. So uh, you know, came down to the wire. I've tried to block out 2020 as much as I can, but I do remember that game. And I think it would have been an entertaining game for neutrals to watch, for sure. Yeah, no, a lot that, of that was a shootout and, up yeah. and down the field. There were some offensive weapons yeah, on the field both that teams. day. And not a lot of defense being played. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe we'll see a little bit more of that uh, on Saturday with a Virginia Tech offense that looks like they're improving and a Louisville offense that is, no doubt about it, very, very, very good. Well, um, we went through the the 2020 game. The 2005 game is the famous oh uh, Marcus Vick stomp with okay. Elvis Doomerville at the, the Gator Bowl. So let's go there. Do you have any fond memories of the few times these two teams have I don't, played? I, I don't remember I, much about that. I don't I, think I watched that one. I, I went to Virginia Tech played JMU in basketball on the road that day. Will and I went to the game. It was in the old Convocation Center at JMU and te- Tech won. And it was great, a really good atmosphere because it was a small gym. Remember, the teams had to, had to walk up steps to get their, to their locker rooms. Very unique arena. Um, after the game, we went to like a, a I don't know, if, I guess it was probably a B-dubs, but we went to a wing place in, in up there at JMU and watched that game. So we saw the stomp on like a big projection TV and uh, – our, uh, that's also the play where we have a great picture of of Justin Hamilton literally knocking the stuffing out of a quarter out of the quarterback's nose because Brom couldn't play that game because he was hurt, so they had to go to their backup Hunter Cantwell. Okay, and he uh, Tech beat him to a pulp. That was also the game uh, Jimmy Williams uh, bumped a ref and got ejected mm-hmm. early. <laughs> Very early in the game. Uh, so it was just like, oh, wow, this game's going to be out of control. And that happened like the first or second drive of the game. So like, it's already out of control. And then Marcus Vick stomps on Doomerville and gets ejected. And it's even more out of control. It was, it was, it was a crazy game, man. Yeah, Chris, I, Chris, you saw a good basketball game. Tech yeah. won that game 77-58. Coleman Collins, 32 points. Big game. Yeah. Um, that football game. How many points did Tech score in the fourth quarter? It was a 35-24 yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And I want to say uh, they scored like two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. James Anderson had an interception return for a touchdown yep. to ice the game. 39 yards with five minutes to go. Yep. Tech scored 22 points in the fourth quarter, almost as many as Louisville scored for the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Humes probably had a good rushing game, didn't he? Cedric Humes, he had a rushing touchdown in the, in the fourth quarter. Okay. He had 22 carries for 113 That's yards and I a recall. touchdown. Yep. He averaged 5.1 yards per carry. Uh, Brandon Orr had 56 yards. Uh, how many touchdowns did Marcus Vick throw for? Two. Yeah, threw for two. Man, he probably would have thrown for three or four if he hadn't got his One was to Justin Harper. The other one was to who? It was in the fourth quarter. Uh, Josh Morgan. No. No? Jeff King. Jeff King. Boom. Um, and that was basically the beginning of the end for Marcus. How do I remember? Right? Yeah, pretty much. That was the last football game he played for Virginia Tech. Because it, it was that, and then on top of that, there was more legal stuff, and then they mm-hmm. finally gave finally him the boot finally they gave up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that that was it. It's funny how I like remember more about this game than I do like what I did two days ago. Virginia <laughs> Tech. Virginia <laughs> Tech picked off Hunter Cantwell three times outside of the James Anderson interception. Who had the other two picks? Oh gosh. Did uh Flowers have one? Brandon Flowers so, had one. So he yeah, so he was actually a backup that year to Jimmy Williams. He was the backup boundary corner. But to he Jimmy probably Williams. had to play because what, what, Williams when he, got when he did out. get in, he was dominant. You know, it was just like wow, what 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 a what sign a of things to come for him. Exactly. Yeah. And some some people will tell you that like Jimmy Williams is the best lockdown corner Tech has had. 
I think it's Brandon Flowers, but it's funny. They played the same position in back-to-back years. Like both guys were on the same, same team at the boundary, posi- boundary position at the same time. Uh, so that one more interception to go, David. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness, to the uh, – DJ Parker. No. No. Dang. DJ Parker doesn't he was get a, enough mention. He was a defensive back. Um, he had four tackles in that game. Aaron Rouse. No, it was Roland Miner. Roland Miner. Also, the I think that was the last year he played, uh, uh, too. He was supposed to be back for 2006, but uh, I think he was academically ineligible, if I recall. But he, he was a good corner. Something. We've gotten off track. <laughs> we, have. we have. So let's talk the, about this game. The ding comes back in again. Something that can be fairly expected with a team, with a this era of college football and a first-year head coach is, this is very much like Virginia Tech, a team that is completely built on the transfer portal. Wanted to break down mm. some numbers here. So they brought in three quarterbacks out of the portal, <laughs> including Jack Plummer from Cal, uh, who played one year for the Golden Bears after playing at Purdue from 2018 to 2021. Uh, they brought in three running backs. They brought in five wide receivers. Out of those five, four are uh in their top 10 pass catchers uh, transferred in this year. That includes Jamari Thrash, who transferred in from Georgia State. He's by far and away their top receiver. Uh, Handful of guys on both the offensive and defensive line. They brought in six cornerbacks, all of which came in from Power 5 schools. Mm -hmm. I found that very interesting. And that that kind of is something that carries throughout. Besides Thrash from Georgia State and a a, a small amount of other guys, a lot of these guys are coming from big schools. And and this is why I keep saying, like, the long-term rebuild in college football, I'm not saying, you know, it'll never happen again or anything like that, but they're going to become less common. And, and the whole thing about uh, you need a long time. If you bring in too many guys in the transfer portal, it's going to be tough to gel. Well, 7-1 and one, ranked in the top 15 with basically a, a whole new team out there. Um, you know, Jamari Thrash is a really good pro player who came up from, from a lower level. Storm Duck was a pretty good player for UNC, especially as a freshman, but now he's a backup corner down there uh, and speaking of their quarterbacks i thought it's funny on their depth chart they list five backups and there's a or between every single one of them it's like i'm really uh, that, that's i'm that's keeping brent pry up nights you don't want to trying to figure out know, who the backup quarterback you don't is. want those guys to transfer again if they don't think they're the backup <laughs> in yeah. this situation I, I think louisville uh you know they, i think they've got some money behind that program and yes. you look at the the revenue that they generate they're actually up there i think behind florida state for second or third in the ACC when you look at those annual revenue things. Now, normally they would put that all towards basketball. Their basketball team stinks right now. I mean, they're like complete mess. Uh, I don't know what they're doing up there when it comes to hoops, but, uh, you know, Satterfield's last year, you know, once they've gotten to the NIL era, they had a really good recruiting class. I think they had the number one running back in the country out of Texas until Satterfield left and then he flipped to somebody else. Uh, But they've done pretty well on the recruiting trail, and I wonder if this – you know, rush of transfers all from power five schools like that. I wonder if that has something to do with the kind of oh, NIL backing that they have with it. I think Louisville fans, and I don't mean this as an insult or the wrong way. Louisville fans, I've never been shy about spending money. Uh, I just, they, they, they have always been willing to pump money into their program. So uh, the, it's legal now. It's, like, legal. it's, it's not something right. to be ashamed sure, of. It's exactly, like, no, exactly. Put it to um, good use. Sure. And, uh, obviously, you know, that they, they could use a lot for their basketball program too, but I, I don't think, uh, I don't think money's going to be an issue for them for basketball. I think they've got a little bit left over they can pump into their football program. Well, I want to talk more personnel, but first I want to get your thoughts on this schedule for Louisville and, and the strength of it. Ranked currently 58th uh, toughest schedule in the country. Notre Dame and Duke really jumped off the page this season. Other than that, uh, nothing crazy, but here, here's, here's what's interesting, and I think this points to good coaching, is they seem to have absolutely no trouble getting up for the big games because they look very impressive against Notre Dame, and th- they really clapped Duke last week. Well, uh, yeah, you know, Riley uh, Riley Leonard's not healthy, so that's a Correct. different Duke team without him out there. But but he that, did play right. They hammered Notre Dame at the line of scrimmage, and Notre Dame is is a tough physical football team in the line of scrimmage, and Louisville hammered them. Uh, like I would say, from a toughness and discipline standpoint, this is the best team Tech will face this year. They're not as talented as Florida State, but but they're still talented enough. But I, I think they're just really disciplined and really tough. Anybody that can out-tough Notre Dame um, is, is impresses me. Um, so this is going to be a much, much different 
much of a different opponent than Virginia Tech has been facing three of their last four games. Like you've got the con- here's how the conference breaks down. You've got Florida State number one, you've got Louisville number two, and like who's your third best team? We thought Carolina. You'll was read there. tomorrow's uh, mailbag. You'll find. Oh, out. really? Okay, mailbag okay. later today. Yes. I guess. Find um, out. But, but you know, just or let's just take it from the perspective of Virginia Tech's schedule. Florida State by far the best team. And then Louisville fairly close behind them. Rutgers, I guess you have to say, is the third best because they're six and two. But in two of their wins, their quarterback threw for less than fifty yards. Are we it's talking about Rutgers? Rutgers, Rutgers. Okay. Rutgers sorry, um, that's a bad six and two. When yeah. two of your wins, your your quarterback throws for fewer than sixty <coughs> yards. So there's Florida State, Louisville, and then there's a huge drop off to the third best team. So that, that that's the type of challenge Virginia Tech is in for this this week. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know J.C. Price. We talked to him last night. Said this is the best finishing team in terms of an offensive line. Just uh, you look at some of the runs last week with Jawar Jordan, where he gets stood up at like the eight yard line and keeps churning, and then the offensive line comes in and pushes him across the goal line like that. They're a physical group. And Brian they're like Yeah, they're like that on both sides of the ball. Uh, so uh, yeah, step up in challenge for the Hokies certainly. Uh, Duke only amassed 202 yards of total offense last week. Again, Riley Leonard played banged up, didn't look like themselves, but still impressive. We're going to talk about how good Louisville's defense is. And uh, they allowed just 44 rushing yards against Notre Dame. Now, Sam Hartman did throw for 254, which is not bad by any means. It's, it's impressive, to say picks. the least. But he did have three interceptions. He um, throws all sorts of picks against <laughs> Louisville. He threw like six against them last year, I think. So. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's that's just, just a team that has his number. His bugaboo. Yeah. <laughs> the other wins on the schedule for the Cards. They beat NC State on the road. Uh, that was that was a scare. Uh, beat Boston College pretty handily. That was a shootout, fifty six to twenty eight. Beat Indiana. Beat Murray State and beat Georgia Tech. Their one loss on the road at Pittsburgh. That was a game that that really does stand out. But uh, they were without Jawar Jordan after two, two plays. Carries. Yeah, two well, carries. You, well, you look at this team and it's really home road. They're completely different animal or neutral sites for a couple. I mean, that, that opener, they almost gave it away against Georgia Tech in the opener. I know that was a neutral site, but it's in, in Atlanta. So how neutral is that? You know, they played Indiana. Pretty tight game in that one. Uh, NC State, as you mentioned before, I think it was 13 to 10. They looked horrible in the first half, uh, went to pit and lost. So, you know, they have this trouble going on the road. Fortunately for them, this game's at home where they've been very good this year. In, in addition to the two ranked teams, they crushed Boston College. This this was kind of crazy to me, and it just goes to show how much of an impact Jawar Jordan not playing the majority of that game against Pittsburgh really did play in, a factor in because uh, Jack Plummer, their quarterback, Going down the line here, how many times he's thrown the ball per game. Against Duke, they only threw it 16 times. Weather was a factor. Didn't really need to. They were winning. They were in control. Against Notre Dame, he threw it 24 times. Threw it 35 times against NC State. Only threw it 21 times in a shootout against Boston College. Threw it 23 times against Indiana. 22 times against Murray State. 31 times against Georgia Tech in the opener. Against Pitt, because he had to. They threw it 52 times. 24.5 attempts per game, I believe it is, in their wins. And then 53 attempts in, in their loss without their without their star running back, who we'll talk about uh, very shortly. This is a this is an offense that the running game has to, to work. Like, like Plummer is solid enough, but and he's got a career high this year in terms of yards per attempt, uh, you know, because they've got some explosive ability on offense. Uh, but at the same time, he's not somebody you want out there slinging it, you know, over 30 times a game. You, you know, he's got to be the guy. Like he's not going to be as effective if if the running game isn't effective. So that that's the key thing for Virginia Tech this week is uh, Jawar Jordan. You have to do a better job against him than you did against all those other stud running backs you faced earlier this season. You've got to make sure you limit that big play. You got to try to get them in third and longs. Um, you know, if how good is Virginia Tech's run defense? I mean, we've seen them shut down three of their last four opponents on the ground, but everybody else torched them. Like it's been hit or miss for the Tech run defense this year. They've either gotten totally torched, or or they've completely shut down th- their opponents. It's not like some there hasn't been like an average 
110 yard rushing performance right. against Virginia Tech <laughs> this year. Um, so what's it going to be this week against a guy who I believe is is just as good as those top backs Virginia Tech faced earlier this year? Well, I want to piggyback off that, Chris, and I want I read that in your article that you, you had your preview article that you had written that he was just as good as those guys. Mm-hmm. I would argue. He might be even better and be the best running back that Tech will face. Um, Benson only has one game of 100 or more yards. Because they just they don't give it to him. Fair. They give it to him like 12 times a game. Okay. I mean, like he had 200 yards against Tech on like, what, 12 carries? Right. Yeah. Well, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. a heavy workload. Day, was, right? Yeah, he, he's, he's not a heavy workload back. When they give it to him, I think he's extremely talented. Pound for pound. Yeah, okay. but he's had a bunch of injuries in his career, and I, th- I think they just don't want to overload him because of that. And then Manungai ran for uh, 744 yards and seven touchdowns with 5.2 yards per carry. Jawar Jordan's done that much more. He has 10 touchdowns on the year. So do you think Jawar Jordan could be the best tackle play all season? He could be uh, when you consider workload – uh, as well, uh, I, you know, if, if Benson was healthy and healthy enough to carry it twenty times a game, I think he would be. Uh, what was the Marshall back's name? Rashina Ali. Rashina Ali. Rashina Ali, really good player. Um, so I, I, th- I think it, I think you, it could be, it could be uh, Jawar Jordan, uh, who uh, wow, this is a misprint on a roster card. Instead of putting his last name, it's like number twenty five, Jawar, one hundred ten. He's like carries. a Brazilian, Brazilian soccer, soccer player. player. <laughs> yeah, just like, uh, so we'll have to get that fixed. Um, but yeah, I, I think it could, you could make an argument that it's him, but you know, he's up there. there there's, there's three or four guys you, you could list and, and, and the previous three guys ran all over Virginia tech. Prob- this probably guy's in terms level. of like how he's used in the offense and how integral he is to the offense. I'd say he's the, the best back they face. Yeah. Cause you know, Benson in Florida state has all sorts of weapons. Correct. On that team. Well, I'll say Ali when, uh, when they lost him against JMU, he didn't play in that game. And then, then they couldn't run the football and they lost. So, I, but but he's this, this is the same level of importance. Yeah. I agree 100. percent So I think it's one of those two guys. With no disrespect to Monaga. Trivia for you: Where did Jawar Jordan transfer from? Oh, Syracuse. Just to get the comments going. <laughs> Syracuse. <laughs> I was shocked to find that I was looking it up earlier this week. So I'm probably gonna write a little bit about him and and Tootin for uh, Friday, but. Uh, I guess he was John Tucker's backup. He was Sean just, Tucker's backup. Wow, like, that's some seriously what a good great recruiting job by of Dino recruiting there. My gosh. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't transpire to wins, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, but, I would, I would yeah. say a Jawar Jordan made the right decision. It, it's it's hard to blame the kid. You're sitting behind Sean Tucker. You're not going to be the premier. I mean, Sean Tucker was an NFL caliber back. He leaves for Louisville, and so you you, you know you can't do anything but wish him the best of luck. So a, a player that I certainly root for, uh, nevertheless. Some argument that has come up about Louisville, since we're talking personnel here, is that you could say they are a little bit one or two dimensional because of the load that falls on two players. Jamari Thrash, their leading receiver, he leads the team with 46 catches for 712 yards and six touchdowns. Second most on the team in receptions is Kevin Coleman. He has 17 catches. Jawar Jordan, 110 carries for 824 yards and 10 touchdowns. Second most in carries is Isaac Garendo, he has 60 carries for 252 yards. If one of those guys yeah. goes out, it's a different team. And you could even extend that to special teams. Brock Travelstead is their kicker, their kickoff guy, <laughs> and their punter. Yeah, if, that, if he got hurt, then it ruins their entire special teams game game plan um, <laughs> to a certain extent. So, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, you know, I think they've got, on, on offense, they've got two guys that are critical critical and if either one of those guys got hurt particularly Jawar Jordan then, then that would mean big trouble for their offense it was kind of like uh you lose Hunter Couture last year in, in tech basketball such a such a important piece there uh, Andy your thoughts on on the one-dimensional conversation yeah I mean if you're gonna be limited to a couple guys making plays those are two pretty good ones though <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah you say if they get hurt it's a problem but if they don't get hurt it's a problem for the other team <laughs> because these these two guys are really good so they've been healthy uh to this point mostly uh, i know jordan uh, missed a lot of that pit game but and you know it showed and so that's the risk you run when you're not that deep in certain spots but uh they seem to be healthy right now and if they're out there on the field they're gonna be a handful Well, as always, Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. Check out their new Checking with Perks account that comes with cell phone protection, roadside assistance, fuel savings, deals and discounts, and more. Visit firstbank.com to learn more about this great new account 
for students. Well, we talked a lot about the offensive side of the football. Chris, let's flip the script here a little bit because, yeah, the offense is really good. The defense is even better. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're really talented at, at all three levels. Uh, this could be the best cornerback combination Virginia Tech faces this year. Jarvis Brownlee, Quincy Riley, both, both really good players. Um, TJ Quinn's a really good linebacker. Uh, Ashton Gelati is an outstanding defensive end. He's got good size, 6'3", 270. Uh, and so he's strong, but he's also quick. I think he's got 10 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks. Uh, he's going to present a tremendous challenge for Virginia Tech's uh, offensive tackles. Uh, it's just a good physical defense across the board. It's not a big defense. Like, no, I don't think any of their two deep defensive tackle go over 300. Uh, their starters are 6'1", 290, 6'3", 270. Uh, it's, it's just not a big defense. One of their linebackers, 205. It's not a big defense, but they're physical and they're quick and they're extremely well coached. I think that's sort of been Louisville's MO lately. And I know coaching staffs have changed and, and defensive philosophies have changed, but uh, they've gotten after the quarterback in recent years. They've been up there in sacks and tackles for a loss. They play behind the line of scrimmage. That's just sort of been this team. And it's not always a uh, huge defense, but they are disruptive. So, uh, you know, that's something I definitely have to worry about from the Hokies perspective, just keeping them out of the backfield. They were successful with that last weekend. I think they had two two runs that went for tackles for a loss outside the, the two sacks in that game. Uh, that was a vast improvement from when they played Pitt uh, a little over a month ago. Uh, they need to be like that again in this game because if, if Louisville's in the backfield, it's going to mess things up. Andy talks about how much Louisville does get in the backfield, but they got one guy that kind of sits back is a little more patient, not as big in the tackle for loss category. Nevertheless, probably one of the best run stopping linebackers in the conference, TJ Quinn. Chris, you got more yeah, on him. For Quinn, us. for sure. Very good against the run this year. Only a red shirt sophomore. So he's got a you know good long career ahead of him. Um, I think that this team's going to bring a higher level of discipline. Like you watch the Syracuse game, rewatch the Syracuse game, and it's incredible. Like, and a lot of this is a credit to Virginia Tech's offensive scheme that they've switched to, and how there's so many moving parts. It sl it slows down players' key reads on defense and often sends them in the wrong direction. But Syracuse was a different level of bad in that game, as far as like like on the long Kyron Drones run, like the whole Syracuse defense belled out to the right side of the field, and Bob Schick. 30 yards downfield before he had to and never touched anybody. That's how bad the Syracuse de defense was on, on that play. Louisville is a different level of discipline. High, uh, you know, Syracuse, I don't think, I'm going to make the prediction every year that staff's not going to last. I'm going to make the prediction again this year this is going to be it. Uh, I just don't think it's a particularly well-coached team. It's what it looked like to me. Louisville, I think, pound for pound might be the best coach team in the conference. When, when you look at Brahms' history at Purdue, I really like what he's done with his coaching staff at Louisville. There's a lot of uh, a lot of people with Louisville backgrounds on that staff. There's also a lot of people on that staff whose backgrounds go back with Brahms. So there's a lot of familiarity. They were able to hit the ground running immediately, partly because of that familiarity. Uh, there's just a cohesiveness there on both sides of the ball that I think is very impressive. And it's, so this is just going to make it – like Louisville's not going to be fooled as much as, as Syracuse or Wake Forest or Pitt. It's just a different level this week. Now, that being said, I wouldn't have given Tech a chance of the world to win this game after the Marshall game, right? Now you feel like – because of the scheme that, that they've switched to on offense, they, they do have a chance. They're playing well, and they're also playing with confidence, and that, and that counts for a lot. And you hope, I think, the hope from Virginia Tech side, we've seen how Louisville gets up for big games. Maybe they don't consider this a big game. Maybe four and four, a four and four team. Yep. You know, the, there's there's no number next to the, the team in the, in the rankings at all coming in. Uh, you know, Louisville's in the driver's seat right now. Uh, you know, look at the remaining schedule that they have. They go Tech, UVA. Uh, Miami, I believe, to finish it out. I mean, if they can win out, they're, they're in the ACC title game. Uh, coming off a big emotional night game win against Duke like that, you wonder if uh, you know, maybe they kind of let down a little bit the next week. I think if you're a Hokies fan, you hope that they do, and they don't take this game as seriously as, as they probably should. 
you have to think maybe they're a little too well coached for that. But at the same time, that's exactly what they did uh, against Pittsburgh, even despite the injury. Yeah, I mean, the, the ebbs and flows and ups and downs of college teams, that hits every team. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, Alabama will be like that from time to time. Even the great coaches struggle to get their teams motivated every single week and and uh, manage the, you know, the, the emotions of, of huge wins like they did uh, last week where they just completely dominated Duke. I mean, I know Riley, Riley Leonard was hurt, but... Uh, 23 to nothing. That's a really solid win against a Duke team that's given a lot of teams trouble this year. Yeah, 202 yards of total offense. That was that was very unlike the Blue Devils, especially the way they can run the football this mm. year, uh, and they were unable to do that. Yeah, you know, like I say, I, th- I think Florida State's the most talented team that Virginia Tech has faced this year, but Louisville's defense, in my opinion, st- well, st- statistically they're better than Florida State's defense, but I think they are, even if you throw out the stats, legitimately better than Florida State's defense. I think they're just extremely well disciplined on that side of the ball. Florida State can lose discipline on the side of that fall, on, on that side of the ball sometimes, but uh, Louisville does not. That They're just extremely well coached. How about the safety position for Louisville? Do you think that there's a spot uh, that Tech can exploit? I don't think uh, Cameron Kelly's very good against the pass. Never has been. Uh if, if you're not familiar with Cameron Kelly, he originally committed to Virginia Tech, even though he knew he wasn't going to end up there. 800% committed? I think he was 200% committed okay. to Tech, and then 800% committed to Auburn. Okay, okay what, does uh, that, what does that mean? Break that down. It's what, just what, what they, when they say. They're crystal ball. They're no, when, when, no when, when they do their announcements on Twitter, that's how they make their announcements. He made his announcement said he was 200% committed to Virginia Tech, I think. And then, okay. he, said, then he said he was 800% committed to sort Auburn. Sort of the running oh, like, that, that, joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, then he uh, signed with Auburn and stayed there for a few weeks and, and transferred to UNC, and he got the waiver because he had a sick family member. Then he played there for a few years, transferred to UVA, stayed there for a semester. Now he's transferred farther away to Louisville, so I guess the family's okay now. It's like it's <laughs> like him and JT Daniels for the most schools yeah, that they played yeah, for in college. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think it's – they're up there. They're up there. Uh, I mean, well, even uh, – even the Louisville quarterback uh, has pl- started for three different schools. If you think he started. This will be his fourth ACC yeah. school. Yeah. Is that correct? So, oh no, no, he, he was never at Tech. So right. he committed, right, so committed so to Tech. Yeah, committed to tech. yeah. But at any rate, I think PFF credits opponents for completing eighty-two percent of their passes for Cameron against Cameron Kelly this year. He's never been particularly strong against the pass. Uh, he's not listed as starter as a starter on their depth chart, but he's actually started seven of their eight games. No. Oh. Uh, so that shows you how much you can kind of trust depth charts these days on on sites. I, I know everybody still I can't wait for that depth chart to come out each week, right? But a lot it's of time, sort of gotten to this point where nothing changes. I just it. I look forward to seeing what I can make fun of on a weekly basis. Right. Yeah, um, but, but at any rate, uh, that I if you could pick out a weak spot on their defense, that would probably be it. But it, like, you can't just throw this a pass to the same area of the field every single play of a game, right? Uh, he can be exploited at times, but at the same time, he's part of a defense that is one of the best in the country, statistically. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a tough out for Virginia Tech this week. But if if they if Tech happened to win the game on like a last second touchdown pass against Cameron Kelly, I think I think I think our portion of the fan base that that paid attention to recruiting would really enjoy that. Worth noting that. As you mentioned, uh, Brock Travelstead does it all on the special teams unit. He is there. Uh, Field goal kicker, he does kickoffs, and he's also their punter. Uh, but another thing to note on special teams, really nothing that jumps off the page in the return game at all. No. Nah, I think Kevin Coleman averages like less than five yards per return in, as a punt returner. They've only returned five kickoffs all year, and I think there's only like three or four teams in the country that that have, have returned that few kickoffs. Um, so you can't really tell if like their returners are any good because they never – return any it seems like uh, of special teams wash like louisville doesn't give up any returns but they don't have any returns in in their own uh, for the in their own right so just on paper it seems like it's an offensive defensive game if if somebody does happen to make a play on special teams it could it's obvious obviously can be critical but it just kind of seems like the special teams will cancel each other out. well if i remember right louisville's punting numbers are pretty bad they're not great um, but a lot of times it's so that could be a field position thing potentially. Yeah. But a lot of times with the short punts, you don't get a chance as a return. Right. So like you, if they would boom one sixty yards, maybe, maybe uh, Holloway could could you know get under it and have a lot of uh, have a lot of room. 
it's like they don't punt it very far. Maybe that's part of the plan. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they want their net punting to to be what, what what is good. But but I don't know. I just I would love to get a big return in this game or or a block or, or something like that. But this feels like a game you have to. If you look yeah. at just the offensive matchups, defensive matchups, you probably give Louisville the edge yeah. in both of those. If you're going to do this and win this, you're going to have to beamer ball it up a little bit. I, you're I need to get an interception, need to get a big return. Uh, I mean, Holloway is certainly capable of that every time he touches it. I've been mega impressed by him uh, as a punt returner. I think like a, a third of his punt returns so far have gone for 20 or more yards. <laughs> that he's, I mean, he just he has that knack for it. He's got he kind of glides. He does. It's, it's sort of a Stroman esque. Greg Stroman, uh, that is, uh, with how he glides along the field. He's just a, a smooth returner like that. Uh, and that whole punt return group has been very good in, in blocking for him. Uh, Tucker Holloway points that out at every opportunity <laughs> that he has when anybody tries to compliment him uh, as a punt returner. I think that that's an area of the game. Uh, you know, Maybe this is a Stu Holt revenge game going back to yeah. Louisville or whatever, even though I guess he left voluntarily uh, when he came here to Virginia Tech. But uh, you know, this is an opportunity for them to go up there and make some plays. Well, uh, let's go there. You just mentioned Stroman. Any kind of an injury update on the Hokies in, in, in general going into this Louisville game? Yeah, he was out there in a blue jersey, and he was going full speed. I don't think the full speed is the concern. I think it's when he makes contact with somebody after that full speed. Uh, was know, it the shoulder? Was it's that? unclear. Uh, this coaching staff is not big on specifics of injuries. They will tell you whether somebody is questionable or doubtful for a game, but they won't tell you with what. Right. So <laughs> you, you watch that play, and you go, was that a, a shoulder? an elbow was it a stinger did he just kind of hit him wrong I don't know exactly it was something upper body enough to keep him out of the rest of the game and, and to keep him in blue uh this week at practice but I, I think they'll find out when they test a little bit more later this week with maybe a little bit of contact see if he can handle that see if it affects him at all and who else was in blue Tootin was in uh Bashal Tootin that sounds like it was more precautionary Caution. than anything he was you know, a little dinged up after the Syracuse game that he's been full speed the last couple of games. Kelly Lawson also in blue. He's been like that the last couple of weeks, though, and has still played. I think it's clear that this defense is a lot better when Nasir Peoples and Jalen Stroman are on the field together at safety. Yeah, the very few snaps that they've played <laughs> together. Have they ever, have they started and finished a game together yet? <sighs> That's I don't a think great they have. Question. They have not. Well, yeah, because I mean, uh, there was, the a, was there a targeting at Florida State. The only two games they've started and played the entire games together were Old Dominion. Or, sorry, the only games they've started together were Old Dominion and. Uh, in the last game, uh, oh Syracuse, Syracuse. No okay. Kidding. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah. Str- did Stroman get because people targeting an ODU or was that a right. different one? Uh, yeah. He okay, so he didn't finish that one first half, and he didn't finish the last one when Peoples was out there because right. he got hurt. And then, That's and then right. Peoples missed like five weeks in there. So. Sheesh. Yeah, it's they've been not just played this, a full game together. It's been this carousel at safety. I mean, that's been the one position that they have like the least amount of experience from their backups at any position. That's been the one they've had the most injuries with their starters. Most Phillips finally got my predicted targeting call. This past he week. earned it. He earned it. That was not, <laughs> yeah. a, when that's I, when not he, one of those. You're like, it. I don't know. It kind of like glances. <laughs> like he, he plowed that guy and it was obviously targeted. Like that had to be the shortest <laughs> review ever. They shoot it up to the booth. They're like, yeah, did he, get him out of here. That was, that was targeted. <laughs> I remember when I was watching his high school highlight tape, the first play, God, I thought he killed that poor kid. I mean, and I'm like, after I calmed down, and this whole highlight film is just him just destroying people. Like, he loves contact. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is awesome. But I'm also like, he's going to get some targeting calls. Yeah, that was the, that was the kind of hit they are trying to get out of the game. Yes. Uh, it's not one of those, like, borderline, oh, they was ducking his head. No, that was... Legit targeting and uh, certainly warranted the ejection in that. I remember you talking about that oh, when yeah. we were breaking down the uh, incoming freshman, and that was the first thing Chris said about that, Moses Phillips. That's actually, I think that's like the most brutally physical play I've ever seen watching high school highlight tapes, outside of a couple plays from like maybe Wyatt Teller. Like I remember he like belly to back suplexed somebody basically in a game one time, but uh, but very impressive. But you knew it was going to translate over at some point into a targeting call. That's awesome. David, what you got for us uh, in the fourth chair today? Yeah, um, Virginia Tech has not yet won on the road this year. I think that's a big talking point just about how you prepare um, for the road games. And um, I think back to that, that Rutgers game, Tech had plane issues, was supposed to leave early on Friday, did not leave until – and did not get in until like after 10 o'clock um, on, on Friday night. Um, I think the Marshall travels were fairly smooth, except for a little bit of traffic. Um, 
But I know after that that Marshall game, Brent, you know, Tech came out hot start. Brent Prime mentioned that they did something different. I was not at the Florida State game, but Tech obviously did not come out to a hot start in that game. When when you have three of these next five next four games on the road, you've got this one, you've got Boston College, you got Virginia, and you haven't played on the road well so far. What can you do to mitigate the challenges of the logistics of the game planning of the hostile crowd? Um, and and what can you do to kind of, I guess, get everybody focused easier? Because I know, I, I guess the positives with traveling is like, you know, they're not, they're not home, you know, they're not in Blacksburg. They don't have all the friends and, and family necessarily that are, are swarming them, but they stay in a hotel in Blacksburg too, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Sometimes it's it's not just you. You got to think. I, I think Tech obviously did not get off to a good start against Florida State, but I think Florida State just seemed after the bye week. That was after their bye week. They just seemed like they had a ton of energy and they were just out for blood. And so sometimes you just go out there and you have to tip your cap to the other team because that's how that's how we expect Virginia Tech to start games in Lane Stadium, right? When you, when you have a home field advantage and a great atmosphere, that's how you expect Virginia Tech to start games. So tip your cap to Florida State. Um, I, I think a lot some of it's confidence-related. Like, like Tech was not playing good football early this season. So when, when you go up to Rutgers, and I know they did get off to a pretty good start against Marshall, but like I don't think they were a confident football team at that point per se. But I do think they're, they're confident now, and they should be confident now. So uh, I think sometimes it's just a confidence thing. Um, but yeah, it'll. It's interesting because yes, Tech is has not won a game on the road this year, and Louisville is like one of the best home teams in the country so far. They're, they just crush people at home, including good teams. So, uh, you, you'd kind of like to trade, uh, maybe trade out the uh, Syracuse and, and Louisville game as far as where they're played, maybe. Or so, yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't want to go up to the dome. Maybe bro. not the dome. Okay, Wake Forest. How about that? Or, yeah. That hasn't been a friendly venue for the Hokies How about, in recent yeah, trips yeah. either. I, I think part of uh, uh, going on the road and winning it comes with maturity. And, you know, this is a pretty young team. This was uh, a lot of young guys travel for this stuff. They were making their first road trips uh, previously. And just having gone through that a couple times, I think that helps. Uh, you're used to it a little bit more. You've, you've gone into foreign territory and, and played games like that. So uh, I would expect them to get better at that as it continues. I don't know if that means they're going to be good at it this week, but uh, I, I think they're, they're better prepared for a road trip than they were, say, at Rutgers earlier this year. And you mentioned special teams and how important that is going to be. If Tech is like If Tech is going to win this game, what is it going to to kind of take that that's that's a good question like what would the box score look like at the yeah, end of the I mean, game I, yeah. I, I just mean like we you know we talked about it louisville has kind of the strength you know on they don't really have a weakness offense just... and defense if, if tech is going to get it done how how do you see it kind of playing out yeah andy hit on it you know a beamer ball type of game uh i'd like to be like plus two in turnover margin or plus one with a big play on special teams, something like that. Like, I don't think, I think it'd be very tough in a turnover neutral game, offense versus defense for both teams for Virginia Tech to go in there and win. I just think, and I, the Hokies have been playing a lot better recently, and I think Tech is an above average football team now, but but Louisville's, uh, they're, they're, they're a lot farther ahead of the, of the teams uh, Tech has, has beaten. Um, they're a lot closer to Florida State level. Um, I think. I think without a Beamer Ball type game, this one might be a bridge too far. Yeah, I think the, you need to. First of all, you can't let Jordan beat you. You got to slow down that run. You got to put it more in the hands of Plummer. Get him off schedule. I, I think he's a very. You know, Pry said that this week. He's a very capable quarterback, and they manage him well. Which you know is a way of saying that if you have to put a lot on his shoulders maybe he's not going to come through in that. He's only really had one monster game this year that was against Boston College where he put up, I think, five touchdowns in that game. So uh, 
I would much rather take my chances making Louisville have to win because of Plummer as opposed to Jordan, because they've shown they can do the latter a whole lot less so with Plummer. Now, that's easier said than done, and that's probably what you say going into any matchup. Hey, stop the run and force them <laughs> to beat you at the pass. So it's not like I'm, you know, this is some grand strategy that breaking out here that nobody's ever done before, but I think that is the key to, to winning this game. Some quick trivia for you. Virginia Tech. Louisville, Louisville's ranked 13th in the college football playoff rankings, 15th in the AP poll. Virginia Tech has 20 wins against teams in the top 15 in, in program history. Six of those have come on the road. Can you name the six? One was against West Virginia in like 1989. Correct. Um, Ohio State. Got to be in Miami at some point. Miami in 2019. Ohio, Ohio State, a, Miami in no. Miami, there is a, there is a Miami on there. Was it 1996? Uh, no. No kidding. Oh, oh, 2004. Duh. Yes. Yeah. There's also another Miami game. On really? There. Oh wait, that one was. No. Yeah. Yeah. There's another Miami game on there. Um, the second. Oldest game on the list. Oh, in 2009, Miami? No, that one was at home. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. So we're, t- we're just talking road games. Sorry, just road sorry. games. Yeah. Okay. So you have, you have the, you have the West Virginia game in 1989. You have the, which is the oldest on the list. You have the Ohio State game in two, 2014. Uh, There's a game in 2013. You got the Miami game in 2004. 2013. And there is... This is beating top 15 teams on the road? There is one in 2006. 2013 was Miami. Did they go down to yes. Clemson? It, was that 06? I'm trying to think. Was that, that a Clemson that, that, game? That was 2007 when they stopped. But that Tech had like 200 yards no, of offense. No, I don't know if you guys would expect them. this 2006 one because this team... Wake Forest? Wake Forest. It was Wake Forest. I yes. was at that game. Really entertaining game. Yes. Gr- um, great 24-6. Again, my memory from... A long time ago is better than it is now. <laughs> what was Florida State ranked when they went down there and beat them? And there was one Willie's in '95, Chris. 1995. Oh, road games. Virginia. Correct. Yeah. So those are six. So last time Virginia Tech beat a top 15 team on the road was Ohio State in 2014. It's been almost a decade. Was that, was that 95? Was that the Drunken Miller? Yeah. Or, yeah. The, the, the comeback in the yeah. fourth. It was 20, 29 to 14, I believe. And and Tech came back and won. Bill's call. Yeah, Jim yeah. Drunken Miller's yeah. engineered the greatest comeback that I've is that ever how he, seen. Is that how he introduces all of his classes? Like the first Bill's, day? That's yeah. how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Play, plays his highlight reel. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, and I kind of want to think big picture here. Based on the last couple weeks of play, Virginia Tech has obviously won three of its last four games. All three of those were at home. Tech is playing better football. You know that... This is a very young team, like Andy said. When you think ahead to the future and what the transfer portal might look like, who, based on the current recruiting class potentially coming in, but also what tech might need, what are the biggest priorities for next year in the portal? And did this last, these last couple games kind of change the way? you think Tech might approach the portal next year? Uh, I know what Chris is going to say. He's going to say we need a Mike linebacker. uh, Before that, we need defensive tackles. They're going to need defensive mm. tackles. They're going to lose three or four. And we do not know what Virginia Tech has beyond Wilford Panay on the depth chart. I think Gunnar Givens has played three snaps this year, and Lamar Law has played three snaps, and that's it. So unless you want to depend on three guys that you don't know anything about, you, you better be willing to hit the portal for a couple of defensive tackles. Uh, yes, a true inside the tackle box, Mike, if you can find one. Uh, if there's one that plays in Norfolk, Virginia, that I would not be opposed to, to signing. Not that I ever could, would ever condone doing something like that. But uh, Are you I, advocating tampering on this podcast? No, Is no. It, just if, okay. he hap- if he happened to hit the portal, okay. you know, I'd, I would reach out. Yeah, um, Probably a safety. I mean, if Nasir you, you could. moves on yeah. after this year, you've seen the issues they've had uh, beyond those top two at safety and then that, you know I think a lot of it depends on who's around next year. Yeah, yeah, and you know cuz you don't know who's going to leave. I mean Jennings could leave, uh, Lane would, could leave. Yeah. Uh you know you might need to to build back up that receiver group again. Maybe not. Tootin could leave. I, I think they they 
it's a pretty decent running back option. So yeah. I think Malachi is still there. They really seem to like Coney. Bryce uh, Duke's played him. well whenever he's played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if that's like an urgent need, but uh, right. you know, sometimes when somebody comes available, uh, I think like Tootin this year, I don't think they were like, we need to go find a running back. But he, came, be, he became available. And you're like, They yeah. sort of had an in. They, they, they probably had coached his running backs coach, I think, at North Carolina mm-hmm. A&T, so they did their homework on it. But I think regardless of who they go after, I think the one thing about the staff is they have – been done a really good job of targeting guys yes. in the transfer portal. Uh, they've gone out and they found some really effective guys. They've went and they have haven't been from huge schools necessarily, but they've been guys that have fit what they need here and they've produced so far. Yeah. And I'll throw in maybe an offensive lineman or two. Uh, I know that's something that, that the old offensive line coach didn't like, but the new offensive line coach, here, you know, Krupp got here so late that it was basically too late to do anything about it. They got Frady, but he was, kind of the, the last guy on, on their offensive line list. Um, I, so you could potentially go that route. You know, it was good to get some of the younger guys on the offensive line. And some of the younger guys, I mean, they already got two or three young guys starting, but some of the young younger guys deeper on the depth chart, I think Johnny Garrett got 18 snaps in that game. That was a career high. He, they're starting to get him involved. Lath Gannam got 12. a snap and, like, first of all, like, pushed the guy over the pile at the end, like, echo of the whistle, and then uh-huh. sort of, like, got down in front of him and, like, pinned him down again. Sweet. Like, I thought he was going to get flagged on that play. You need a little uh, nasty. Very spirited yeah. uh, with that block. He was excited to be out there. Yeah, you, you know, so, and here's, here's what I think about, like, player retention and this goes hand in hand because you, you don't know what you'll need in the portal until you s- see who leaves but you got a bunch of guys on this team that with that could leave i guess but they've got a covid year you know like daquan wright's listed as, as a senior uh is he going to try this hand at the nfl but he's got a covid years right even though Tech doesn't list it as such, he's eligible for another year. Daquan Felton. Daquan, Fel- Daquan Felton. There's too many Daquan Daquans Wright's all pretty. over the place. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, and, you know, it's the same same thing with Jalen Lane. Um, Stephen uh, Gosnell is listed as, as a senior. He's el- el- eligible for another year. A guy like Tootin, like, running backs don't get picked high these days, and, and I, I think Tootin's good, but like he's going to get picked, it'd be a late-round pick, and you're not guaranteed to even make a roster at that point. So you're talking – Maybe practice squad salary. Well, Tech can beat practice squad salary in NIL these days. True. So, With running backs, it's always like how many tread, how much tread so is tread on the is tires exactly at that point. You right. only have so yeah. many carries in you. Right. So if if you're if you're projected to like be a late pick or you don't know if you'll be picked or not, you know, depending on the position you play and things like that, it could be worth your while to come back. If you play for a program that can pay you six figures in NIL, which I believe Virginia Tech can to their best players these days. So uh, I think that'll make player retention a little bit little bit easier for the Hokies these days. Allow me to reel us back to Louisville sure. a little bit here. Let's, uh, let, let's finish off with some buy or sell. Why not? Um, so let's go through the records. Chris is – now, obviously, Chris and David did not play I'm, last week. I missed week. a week. It's yep. not fair. <laughs> I, it's true. Well, it's a percentage. But uh, Chris is 6-8. and eight. David is seven six and one. That was when we were still playing buy seller hold. Because of that, we have since gotten rid of the hold. Will is nine and ten after last week, and Andy is uh, pretty good. He's twenty two and eleven. Ooh, wow, that's pretty that solid. is like move to Vegas numbers there. Yeah, that's shoot. awesome. Yeah, no kidding. So Andy you knows learned a lot from Aaron about. McFarlane. I'm, I'm getting a big head here now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to struggle this week. I can just tell. Let's see if the successes continue here. So I feel like when we do this, we need to like. Start post producing like boom, get a little bit of theme music going and uh, some some uh, you know fun with it and some sound effects and whatnot. But uh, Jawar Jordan, one hundred and twenty five or more rushing yards. Chris, bye. I'll oh, bye. Bye. All right. I, I can't come back if you keep picking the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> Basial two in any time touchdown. Bye. I'm gonna buy. David's, David's trying to decide. It. I'm yeah. going to sell it. He's oh, going to sell it. He's trying to get back in the game. Oh, by the way, I have to type this, though. He's got he's got six touchdowns this year, and that's actually good. He's got six touchdowns in, in eight games this year. Actually, seven with the kickoff return. Oh. So he's averaging almost a touchdown a game. That, that's a good one, Gio. And actually, I'm, I decided instead of typing and holding us up so we can kind of make it more fun speed round, like I'm going to go back, watch it after, and then I'll, and okay. I'll calculate everything. Uh, so Jamari Thrash, 82 or more receiving yards. He's averaging uh, 712 yards in eight games. Bye. 
I'm going to sell. He's going to sell. I'll buy it. He's going to buy it. All right. Thrash, six or more receptions. Sell. Wow. Okay. I will sell. David, thrash, six or more receptions. I'll buy it. He's going to buy it. All right. Virginia Tech passes for 220 or more yards. Sell. Hmm. I'm going to buy. Okay. Hmm. Tech threw for... You said 220? 220. Oof. That's his tech, not drones. Yeah. This is Correct. Virginia Tech. Okay. So if Malachi Thomas throws a 95-yard touchdown pass, you, you, it'll count. You've learned your lesson. But yes. You know how, how I mean, Tech threw for 210 last week. That is correct. They also ran for 318, though. Probably yeah. won't do that this week. Yeah, yeah I um, think it's going to be tougher sledding. That's I, why I said bye. I will say so. All right, he's going to sell it. Virginia Tech, four or more sacks. Number four in the country in sacks. Yeah, yeah. And and their the last two games were against teams who were 120th and 125th in sacks allowed. Uh, Good point. <laughs> uh, sell, sell. Sell. I'm going to sell. I think uh, less than four in this one. Less I, I think Louisville's going to be smart, and they're going to run the ball a lot, and I don't think they're going to pass it more than 20 to 25 times. So there's there's oh. not going to be as much of an opportunity. There might be a question about that coming Oh, really? Yeah, what you yeah. got, David? Yeah, so. Sell? All right, they're selling. Out. You know, I, if I was playing, I'm going to take it. Virginia Tech, I'm going to take them right on the die at four sets. At four. Yep. Virginia Tech wins the turnover battle. Going to be If you want any chance, I think you have to do this on Saturday. Oh, I'll actually say bye. Just I'll sell. Bye. I'll sell that one. I'm so. selling it. All right. I, I feel like this is weird and worth bringing up, too. It feels like the last couple of games have been, like, turnover less for, like, both teams like tech doesn't create a lot of turnovers, but they're also not giving the football away. Yeah. Um, now there have well, been I mean, like one or two. You forget about the there. Wake Forest game when Tech forced a couple fumbles and had an interception. Yeah. Now Plummer's got eight picks. Does have eight picks? That a question coming up about that as well. Uh, Daquan Wright four or more catches. Daquan Wright. Correct. The tight end. <laughs> uh, sell. I'm gonna sell. He looked a uh, little. Uh, Limping around a okay. little bit the other day. I don't think I've ever seen somebody get carted off the field and then come back yeah, in the game. It did not that look good for a second there. It was very Paul Pierce like uh, <laughs> when they took him off the court in a wheelchair and then he came back in. But uh, sell, selling. Sell. Okay, Basial two in fifteen or more carries had eighteen last week. Buy better gonna, be a buy. I'm going to buy that if he's healthy. I think he'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Buy. Bye. Jalen Lane, 70 or more. Get this. Because I, who knows? I could see him running some kind of a jet sweep or a, <laughs> something fancy. Jalen Lane, and he did throw one. It went incomplete, but I believe he threw one last week. Jalen Lane, 70 or more all purpose yards. Buy. I'm buying that. Yeah. So. Sell. Okay. Malachi Thomas, touchdown. Any kind of touchdown, it can be a pass. Touchdown <laughs> accounted for. A touchdown so accounted for. So. I'm selling that. Selling. I'm going to buy it. Okay, I think he's due for a rushing touchdown. It's, it's late at some in the season. Point. You, you, you got to take some risks. What do you think I'm, I'm, I'm just playing the game. Is that man? like a plus six hundred? I got, like on this. I got no money on this. <laughs> it's gotta be. I just think he's he, he'll he's get like a one yard rushing the touchdown. Football well, he feels almost due to 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 have a rushing touchdown. He is running it well right now. You know, sure. he's so. running it well. They just when you get down when Malachi close Thomas scores a touchdown, I'll be laughing in your face. When you get down close to the goal line, you have drones as an option. You have Tootin as the top option. I just think that you know when your quarterback runs. Runs the way drones does. I think it takes away some opportunities for running backs. It also seems like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like they really don't run Malachi in the red zone. They give it to Tootin in that in that range. It feels like. Also, when they've gotten down there lately, they've kicked field goals instead of scoring touchdowns. Right. We so. got a question about that coming up too. Virginia Tech three or more field goals. I'm gonna buy that. Oh, uh, what did I uh, sell? For I got to buy. I said uh, 23 points for them. So that's how you get there. All right, three or more field goals. All right, get a safety again. <laughs> safety oh, so they've already oh, used right. up their safety line this year, I think. <laughs> Steven Goss now three or more catches. So three or three. More. He had one last week, but I'm, he's had games where he's had six. I'll buy it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I think they're gonna have to throw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. I think he has at least three catches. Really? At least three. That okay. Jawar Jordan, two or more touchdowns. Buy. I will buy. I think he's going to have a big game. He's got 10 on the ground, one through the air. Bye. Bye. All right. Everybody's buying that. Tucker Holloway returns 
three or more punts. A lot of teams have been pretty good at not allowing him to do so. Syracuse was right. horrible at that. <laughs> Syracuse was horrible at everything. Um, <laughs> sorry, Gio. It's, it's okay. It's, uh, it's the reality I've accepted. Sell. Uh, Louisville doesn't punt it very far. I think their average is like 39 yards or something like that, which is pretty low these days. Generally, the shorter you punt it, the fewer opportunities the other team will have for a return. So I'm selling. Yeah, I'll sell. I think it's going to be a lot of fair catches, if it's anything. Okay, that's what I was thinking, too. I'll buy it. He's going to buy it. All right. Uh, APR, well, this kind of goes in tandem with if you're picking less sacks, you're probably going to go against this one. APR, two or more sacks. So. so if it was one, I'd say yes. I'll yeah. sell with two. Okay. I'll sell it. I had to make it more fun with two because I feel like he's almost due for a sack a game at this point. You could have yeah. made it. You could have made it one and a half. I feel like you need to start. You always start with me. It okay. always ends with David. I think you got okay. to you got to switch it up each week. We'll go the other way then for the rest <laughs> of Chris it. Chris is crying <laughs> foul. <laughs> I know. Louisville six or more tackles for loss. David, uh, bye. I'm buying that one. I'll sell that one. It's kind of sell. I mean, Tex oh, only, look at, look at strategy. <laughs> Tex only Tex only allowed uh, you know four TFLs the last two weeks. Each of the last two weeks, mm, Louisville's good at getting the back. But there. Louisville yeah. is a uh, this this might be the best defense they've played all year. Yep. So what you're telling me is the line is good. That was a good line. Yeah, I think it's fair. All right. Um, how about Tech runs three or more trick plays? That can include punts, fake punts, whatever. Uh, uh, it depends on what your definition. Is it like is a reverse play. a trick play? Yeah. Like a like if, like if one baby catches trick, a punt I feel like or kickoff, I, I, I feel like this this is a question that it would get taken to the Supreme Court, so to speak. Because what is the definition? This of, is what we're fan is like. Screw it, we'll just pay it out. We'll just if be people right. are going to argue All this right. thing. Right. Yeah, what are you defining as a trick play? I'm saying like it has to be one of those ones where the broadcaster gets confused and goes, "Oh, the trickeration." It's got to be so. It can't like be just like a. It can't just be like a reverse to Xavier Turner Bradshaw. No, it can't okay. be like a reverse. No, you're talking a flea flicker or a running back pass or, or something. Uh, Cole something Nelson like takes or, the snap. Yes, yes. Right. one of the. What about a, they ran two last week? What about one a, of them didn't work? I'll one say, of them went for a touchdown. I'll say sell. Three or more, I'm going to sell. Yeah, I sell. Yeah, now that I think about it, that line, is a little. <laughs> <hard>. <laughs> they only ran what two last? If you put it at two, then maybe you have to think about it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, oh, well. You already put it out there. The money market I is... I blew it is, on that one. Yeah. Vegas has blown it. Someone leads <laughs> Watch by... Watch them come out, and it's just like a carnival. Like, every play is a trick play. Yeah. That'd, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, someone leads by double digits at some point in this game. David. Buy. I'm buying that. Buy. All right. Louisville, 26 or more passing attempts. David. Oof. Uh, sell. I'm going to buy. I think that's just... The way football is now, you throw it a lot. I'm going to sell. Um, I think if I'm Louisville, I, I look at what the Virginia Tech defense has done against similar offenses this year, and it hasn't been good. So run, 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 run. Louisville, 270 or more passing yards. David, so I'll sell. I'll sell that. Selling it. Kyron Drones interception. Does the streak get broken? Oh. Uh. He even no, when, when was the last when was the last one was the last one was the last I'll, I'll, say, I'll ones. buy on this one. I think he's gonna have to throw it a lot. I think he was lucky not to have when one. When was last the last week. time he threw a pick? Marshall. Rutgers. Rutgers his first start. Yeah. Right, right. I think it happens this week. I'm buying. It's really good defense, and I do think Tech I'm will have to it. throw it more this game. So it's probably a good buy this week, but yeah, buy. Yeah. All right. Well, Plummer's thrown eight of them this year. That's good for what, one a game? Yes, that's good for one a game. So does Plummer throw a pick? He's thrown multiple picks in multiple games as well. It's not a pick every game, David. Mm -hmm. Didn't you ask a question earlier about the turnover battle? I did ask about the turnover battle. I said, does Tech win the turnover battle? What did I say? Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I, 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 I got to go back. I will, say, <laughs> I will say yes, Plummer throws a pick. Yeah, I'm going to buy. I think he does. He thinks that was a pick. Sell. So. Yeah, Chris, right. you need to change it up a little bit. <laughs> All right, Virginia Tech covers spread currently sits at 9.5, so I don't want to hear that it changed between now and then. We're playing it at 9.5. Dave? Yes. I said 30 to 23 Louisville, so yes. Uh, Bye. Yes. Bye. Yes. All right. Tech, tech covers. Well, I know the answer to this one. Uh, Virginia Tech wins. But it, it, it gives somebody either an extra bonus win or a loss if, if, if you're wrong. So. Sell. 
See, the issue is we've all made our predictions. Yeah, the, 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 the preview. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sell. I think Louisville wins. Yeah, sell. I've got it 27-20. I just think it's on. They're just so balanced. It's just really hard, and the fact that they're so good at home and Tech hasn't won on the road, it, it would be an upset. Yeah, a major upset. I tell you what can be a game changer this week for Virginia Tech if it finishes red zone drives. Yeah, like if it if it does not kick a field goal every time it gets to the twenty yard line, like that has been, Tech is essentially shooting itself in the foot. Like Tech's getting three points. That's a four point swing every single time, and and Tech has, like if if Tech can get into the end zone instead of just getting up there and kicking a chip shot field goal. Like, don't get me wrong. John Love's been great, and I expect, I still expect Tech to kick a handful of field goals this week. But that could be a game changer if Tech can get in the red zone and actually finish drives and get touchdowns because then you've got a four-point swing there. And I think that's just been a, a very bad weakness for Tech this year. Six trips last week. Four field goals, two touchdowns. You'd like to at least see that even out, if not reverse. You'd, you'd like to reverse that, ideally. Yeah. Uh, that said, I will take six red zone trips this week. Yeah, if they get that, that be nice. I like their chances. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, final thoughts before we let everyone go uh, about this 330 matchup between the Cards, 13th in the country. Just a massive opportunity for the Hokies. Yeah, it's a big opportunity. I uh, wish the game was in Blacksburg. So mm, these, this yeah. is the second meeting since Louisville joined the ACC. And... Both in Louisville and David. When when does Louisville finally come to? I think it's twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Yeah, it'll be. So, so it'll be, it'll be Louisville's it'll be first trip since nineteen ninety one to Blacksburg. That's eleven years. So since in the they same conference, the conference with a, This yeah. is out of control. Uh, please stop. You know, yeah. with the, with the whole conference expansion. But anyway, that's another conversation. Uh, it's the type of game the ACC needs with, with with two state schools with good fan bases and and, and that really support their programs. Uh, so you know, hopefully Virginia Tech's playing in more games like this in the future where where it really means something. Yeah, it's exciting to be early November and you're talking about a meaningful ACC game, and it's not just about uh, bowl eligibility. I know that is you know also a storyline in this whole thing, bowl eligibility. But you know, you win this and you can see a path to Charlotte. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like convoluted. It's a pretty <laughs> straight shot. I mean, it still would be a long shot because you have to win some games uh, on the road, even against not great competition, but any road game right now has been challenging for the Hokies, but I mean, it's right there. And and I think we'll find out a lot about this team and how good it actually is and what kind of you know corners it's turned the last four weeks. I think this is a very similar game to Florida state. You go on the road you play a kind of an early afternoon game against a good team, um, a very balanced team. The opportunity's there. No doubt about it. The opportunity is certainly on the table. We can't wait. We'll see you down there, Andy. Uh, David, myself, will be uh, down there. Chris, where are you watching the game from this week? I haven't decided yet. Hasn't we'll figure decided. that out. I, what was it basketball? You got to have the burger from, was it Champs or PKs was the good luck charm? Uh, You know, my... Uh, Pre-game burger streak ended a long time ago. Okay. That said, I did have in Charleston one in Charleston before the Wake Forest game, and Tech won. Mm, okay, know. maybe you maybe it's restarted. Yeah, maybe maybe this is a new spark. Nevertheless, it's a three thirty kick down in Louisville. Uh, you can watch the game on the ACC network. Follow along all weekend long on Tech Sideline. We're gonna have a ton of content for you in the coverage and. Basketball's coming up on Monday as well. Crossover season is here. Thanks so much for joining us on episode 326 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. We'll see you next week.